Russia has said that its operation against Islamic State in Syria will last for four months, while the international coalition led by the United States has said they may continue 14 years. All this while observers has recorded mass withdrawals of militants from the Nusra Front and the Fatah Army and Har Sham Tower to Turkish border. It is suggested that the reason the militants are moving to the region is because they have the support of the Turks and other Arab nations as the Russians increase the strikes on their positions. We are for the Russian presence because they are truly standing with us, unlike Western countries, which look to us in a colonialist way. And so they are trying to tear up and destroy Syria under the pretext of terrorism, and their fake strikes against terrorism did not give real results until now. Western countries that follow the U.S. path are just following the United States, and they deceive us by claiming that they are fighting terrorism, but the alliance has been striking the area for more than a year. In the same context, the Turkish foreign ministry accused Russian planes of violating Turkish airspace and assumed the Russian charged the affairs who denied the claim. Analysts see the move is an attempt at a provocation by Turkish and which is actually a U.S. request to send a message to the Russians that they are not the only ones on the ground and that the coalition lead by United States has not ended its rule. Turks, from the beginning of the Syrian crisis, were supporting the terrorists. And there's plenty of evidence on that. Turks are sending a message from their employer, USA, to the Russians. Through intercepting the Russian aircraft, they are saying our role here is not over yet. We're waiting to see the Russian reaction. The majority of Syrians believe that the Russian military operation against the Islamic State will end the protested war. A fact that not even major Western newspaper could hide. The British newspaper, The Guardian, had in a report from Syria that there is a majority that see Russia as the savior of the region in the face of the clutches of terrorism. Hazm Abdullah, Telesur, Syria. Lena Gutierrez would lose her position as Honduras National Congress Vice President because of an accusation against her and her family's medicine company for selling fake medicine to the country's public health system. The President of the Supreme Court is the judge of this case and decided that there was enough proof to begin a trial against the Legislative Vice President. A formal accusation was presented against Lena Karim Gutierrez Arevalo for the crime of fraud against the interest of the state and to the detriment of public administration. Also, there's an official accusation against Lena Karim Gutierrez. Her sister, Jeanette Karim Gutierrez Arevalo and Gladys Arias Rivera for complicity in the crime of falsification of public documents. The use of false documents against public health and other crimes to the detriment of public health administration. Gutierrez's trial could last two years and what would force her to leave Congress for this administration. Each crime she is accused could mean at least six years in prison, so she could face a sentence of at least ten years. It was a strong hit to the ruling National Party's image because she has a very high profile position. She is the Congress by President. She has been at the head of Congress for the last five or six years and has covered for President Juan Orlando Hernández before and now for Congress President Mauricio Oliva. She is an important figure of the National Party and now their image is affected. There is no official communication from Congress about Gutierrez's status, and the current accusations against her are just the first to go to trial. There are many other high-profile government officials accused of also being responsible of fraud against the state. Gerardo Torres, Telesur, Central America. Workers in the United States continue to face violations of their basic rights by employers. Those who try to fight for rights such as higher salaries and basic benefits often see themselves fired by companies who do not respect their basic rights to organize. I was fired in January of this year unjustly for my activism because I fought for my rights and because I asked for better working conditions in our workplace. Being an undocumented worker in the United States means being exploited at work, working long hours and sometimes not receiving proper compensation. These reasons drive many workers to seek membership in unions.
trying to change the law to make penalties longer, strong, stronger and more effective. We're trying to change the law to give workers more rights and protect them. We're trying to get comprehensive immigration reform with a pathway to citizenship so 11 and a half million workers can be exploited and cheated out of wages and denied uh, fair conduct. For many workers, being part of a union signifies large risks such as being harassed and even detained. We have a long way to go in order to make sure that employers are held accountable for their actions um, in regards to retaliation and intimidation of their employees. Annually, thousands of construction workers report being victims of physical injuries without the right to compensation or medical care. Bianca Perez, Telesur, Washington, D.C. Me gusta, no Prior me to becoming president, Álvaro Uribe was the governor of the state of Antioquia between 1995 and 1997, a period in which the back then local mayor, Gloria Cuartas, recalls the horror of 116 massacres that left nearly 700 dead and some 200,000 displaced. Alvaro Uribe is responsible for the paramilitary structures. He holds responsibility in that regard. It is not possible that after all the murders, bombardments, extrajudicial killings and massacres that took place in Antioquia, the back then governor says he had nothing to do with it. Among those massacres is the one of 1997, when paramilitaries entered the village of Elaro, murdering 15 and burning the town to the ground. The Inter-American Court of Human Rights has already convicted the Colombian state. Now the country's prosecution has ordered an investigation into Álvaro Uribe alleged to complicity in the massacre. The investigation against Álvaro Uribe for what happened while he was the governor of the state of Antioquia seems to come a little bit late. There were already more than enough testimonies, complaints and facts that were seriously incriminating the former governor and then President Álvaro Uribe. Among the key evidence is the statement of Don Berna, a former paramilitary commander extradited to the United States and who has accused Uribe of having direct knowledge of the 1997 massacre and of sympathizing with paramilitarism. Many of what happened back during those days is rooted in Uribe's security policies. Now the already proven links between many of his close aides and members of government with paramilitaries implicates Uribe's responsibility too. For many, the investigation into Uribe's links with paramilitarism is part of the truth and responsibilities that will have to be acknowledged during an eventual process of transitional justice. Natalia Margarita, Telesur, Bogotá. Brazil's conservative opposition has now made five requests to impeach President Dilma Rousseff. None of these requests has any legal basis. In fact, they are trying to manipulate aspects of the Constitution to bring down a president who was elected, whether or not you like her government. What's happening in the Congress is a good attempt, which will be defeated because he's had no legal support and it's immoral. Faced with a threat of a parliamentary coup, Rousseff reshaped her cabinet, giving more space to the PMDB. This extortion by the government's so-called allies means the centre-right PMDB increased its number of ministers from six to seven, while Rousseff's Workers' Party lost three. However, the Speaker of the Lower House and leading opponent of the government, Eduardo Cunha, is himself from the PMDB and has just been accused of corruption in Switzerland. The PMDB is the biggest party in Congress, and this is reflected in the number of ministries it negotiated. They should strengthen the government's support in the Congress and, in short term, help to calm the political situation. Facing possible imprisonment, Cunha leads the Congress that has been questioning the Dilma government's accounts. The President of the House of Deputies presents himself as a pillar of virtue and respectability and tries to manipulate public opinion. But in fact, he's under investigation for corruption. So bit by bit, the enemies are being unmasked. It's a major paradox, but these are the people seeking to bring down the government and overturn the choice of millions of Brazilians in last year's presidential election.